Convocation Center on the Notre Dame campus, the Fighting Irish, home to play the Explorers of LaSalle University. And good evening, everybody. Welcome to Notre Dame Basketball on Sports Channel America. Ted Robinson, Jim Gibbons. The Irish are still at home, but still playing tough teams. LaSalle is without Lionel Simmons this year, but they're thriving. A seven-game winning streak coming in tonight. The Irish continue to struggle, wins and losses both. Life without LaFonso Ellis has not been kind. And as they turn the corner, Jim, the last 11 games of the year, what do you see as Digger Phelps' major concern? Well, I'm not going to stand here and pretend like I have the answers, Ted. I'll tell you one thing. I agree with Digger. They have to stay focused, and they have to take one game at a time. They have 11 games left, and I think nobody knows. You don't know, and I don't know what's going to happen. I think the young men that are warming up behind us, they're the ones that are going to have to step forward, put it up a notch or two, and take that challenge. Well, the challenge tonight comes from a very good LaSalle team. As we mentioned, no Simmons, but still a great backcourt that will challenge Notre Dame tonight. Well, that backcourt happens to be rated about the third best backcourt in the country behind Arkansas and behind North Carolina State. Doug Overton is the 15th leading scorer in the country right now, averaging 26 points a game. Woods is averaging about 22. Between them, that is about 48 points a game he's getting from that backcourt. And they're not only doing it in the backcourt, they're doing it on the defensive end also. Oh, yeah, Woods, a terrific defensive guard. Well, Speedy Morris in his fifth year as the LaSalle coach is the man who gets to sit back and fold his arms sometimes and watch that great backcourt. Uh, there's no question. We're really elated with what Doug Overton and Randy Woods have done. They, uh, they really picked us up. Everyone said because Lionel was leaving, it, it could be a down year. But when you have, we really have four guys back with experience that started from last year's team. And then when Doug and Randy are, are off, you got Jack Hurd to pick them up. So we really have a, a, a nice trifecta. You know, the last couple of weeks haven't been so kind for Digger Phelps. He's had to deal with one nationally ranked opponent after another. And preparing his game plan for tonight, he knew exactly what the weapon was. Well, Sal Explorers have one of the best backcourts in the country tonight with Overton and Woods. Doug Overton, probably a late first round draft pick, maybe early second round, but obviously one of the great guards in college basketball. The Irish have to stop the threes, including Jack Hurd. Great running team from LaSalle and Speedy Morris. The Irish need this one to get things moving for Syracuse this coming weekend. Now, Digger said it, a running team. LaSalle's a lot of city kids on this team, Jim. They're going to play up-tempo. How do you see that in the game plan? Well, I'll tell you one thing. The LaSalle game plan... Speedy gave it to me, number one, they've got a rebound. He said, especially on the offensive end, we got to get some kickbacks. The defensive pressure, they are really going to try to stop the penetration of Singleton and Bennett. And then thirdly, he said, we've got to run that break well and not try to force it. For Notre Dame, you don't have to be a road scholar to know they have to stop Woods and Overton. They want to pound the offensive glass and control the defensive glass. And then the last thing is, they've got to play transition defense, Ted because at any given moment, they've got to know where Overton Woods and Jack Hurd are. And for Notre Dame to play well inside tonight, they'll continue to rely on Keith Tower, who's had a great resurgence since LaFonso Ellis' departure. Tower averaging 12 points and 8 rebounds. So we'll see if Notre Dame can get more of that from Tower tonight as the Irish get set to continue their homestand against the LaSalle Explorers. Tonight's game is being sponsored by Schlitz Malt Liquor. No one does it like the bowl. Coming up from Notre Dame, the Fighting Irish host LaSalle. The lineups are next. First stringers here tonight. Jack Lloyd is back from vacation. They're ready to bring us the starting lineups. Here's the starting lineup for the visiting explorers of LaSalle University. At forward, 6'6 six, six and a senior. From Fort Worth, Texas, number 20, Broderick President. At forward. 6'6", six, six, and a junior from Linnitz, Pennsylvania. Number 25, Jack Hurd. At center, 6'9", and a junior from Amsterdam, Netherlands. Number 44, Milko Leverst. At guard, 6'3", and a senior from Philadelphia. Number 11, Doug Overton. At guard, six feet and a junior from Philadelphia, number 14, Randy Woods. The head coach of the Explorers in his fifth year, William Speedy Morris. And now, the starting lineup for your Fighting Irish. At forward, 6'9", and a freshman from Wabash, Indiana, number 54, John Ross. 
at forward, 6'5", and a senior from Springfield, Kentucky, number 35, Kevin Ellery. At center, 6'11", and a junior from Pittsburgh, PA, number 5, Keith Tower. At guard, 6'1", and a senior from New Orleans, Louisiana, number 10, Tim Singleton. At guard, 6'1", and a junior from Houston, Texas, number 12, Elmer Bennett, the head coach of the Fighting Irish, Digger Phelps. Digger looking for win number 390 United against LaSalle. We'll have the tip off for you on Sports Channel America after these messages. Digger Phelps and the Fighting Irish take out the best in college basketball. See it on your home for Fighting Irish. Notre Dame's got to stop Jack Hurd. He's the third leading scorer in this team at 17 a game. Well, I want to tell you something. They beat Loyola Marymount 133 to 118. Overton had 45, Woods had 46, and Hurd had 29. They scored 120 out of the 133 <laughs> points. So it is actually three men that can score, and there's your oh, officiating boy. trio mm -hmm. from left to right that will be working tonight's game. Well, Notre Dame had their five-game winning streak snapped last year in Philadelphia. LaSalle beat the Irish, and despite the fact that Lionel Simmons was the big player for LaSalle last year, Doug Overton, I think, was the guy that really beat Notre Dame last year. Took over the basketball game and played one-on-one -on -one about the last five minutes. Notre Dame with another different starting lineup that they bring Damon Sweet off the bench. John Ross and Kevin Ellery both in the starting lineup. And here's Bennett. And that's a two-pointer for Elmer Bennett. Belongs to Elmer. That's been kind of quiet, Jim, but the Irish would really love to see Elmer Bennett get that shooting eye back. He's shooting well below his normal range of shooting. Yeah, he, he has been, and he, that was very nice action on his part on that first possession. Levers being played by Ross. Boy. And a three-pointer from Randy Woods. He, he, he pounded the ball inside that time, Ted, and Keith Teller turned and looked into the pivot, and he's guarding one of their best three-point shooters. Well, that's what you have. LaSalle is one of those teams that has taken advantage of the three-point rule, and they've made it a major weapon. I, 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 oh, that was out of bounds, but Singleton saves it nicely to Ellery. Still 25 to shoot. Singleton open. Tim Singleton. Singleton. I was going to say, Jim, I'm one of those people that believes, too, you just have to have three-point shooting now to be an effective college basketball team. It's become such a weapon. You bet. The game of the 90s, I'll tell you that. Overton short, but Levers runs down the rebound, and there goes Overton again, and let's see. It's going to be a charging foul on Overton. Elmer Bennett with a little smile on his face. Overton's not smiling. Take a look and see if he's planted now. I think that Tim Singleton was planted right there, and that's a pretty good call. Doug Overton should have stopped one step sooner and taken that right off the glass. Well, Sal is not a particularly deep team. If they get in any kind of foul trouble, it would be a big benefit to Notre Dame, but so is the shooting. Bennett has in his first two. Bennett's that shooting is 41% this year. Three possessions for Notre Dame, Ted, and every one of them they have executed very, very well. They're very patient, and they're breaking down the defense. Both teams playing man-to-man. -man. Bird is short. Ross has it knocked away. Woods is able to save it. So good hustle by Randy Woods. Gives LaSalle another chance. And Ellery with a rebound. Six three Notre Dame. Here's Tower. Turns right away. Nice execute. Watch how he's got him backed in. He wanted that basketball. Turns right in. Milko Levers put the hand right in his face and right on the arm. And that is great concentration by Keith Tower. That's a big time basket. 
Last seven games, he's averaged about 12 points and eight rebounds a game. He has really turned it up a notch or two. It just seems like Tower is a player that maybe he needed to get out of the shadow of a, of a better known player Boy. to really thrive. I'll tell you, I don't know if there's any significance, but when Lafonso went out, yeah. he turned it up. You guys can dig her that. He, he says he doesn't really know, but the circumstances all would say that. Oh, great move by Overton. And it's knocked out by the Irish. What a move by Overton. LaSalle hasn't gotten into sync offensively yet, but boy, the Irish have gotten as much as you can get on every possession. Well, already, oh, good tip out there by Levers, and it's out of bounds off Bennett, but already you've seen LaSalle's game plan. In 12 out of their 17 games this year, LaSalle has attempted at least 23 point shots. Well, they have shot 407 in case our viewers and our listeners want to know. 407, Notre Dame's taken 167. And if you shoot 20 a game, that's basically about a third of your shots. That's a lot of shots from out there. Here's another one. I think that's five already that they've tried. Here's Bennett, three on two. Great reversal by Bennett. He left Jack Hurd flat-footed. And six early points for Bennett. Anytime Bennett can get Jack Hurd one-on-one, -on -one, Ted, he's going to take it, and that's just what he did. Right on him. Well, a very good start for Notre Dame, and LaSalle just bombing away after a bad start. Here's Liebers called for a foul. That's two quick fouls on the LaSalle center. I'll tell you one thing, they are not going to stop firing it up either, but that's the thing. You have to hope a team like LaSalle comes in and that they are a little cold getting out of the starting gate, and that's exactly what's happened to them. Notre Dame is playing good defense, doing the switching so that they can get out on those three-point shooters. They'll give them all they want inside. They're not going to give it to them outside. Yeah. Outside of the one that Woods made, though, LaSalle seems to be just limp patient as Ellery gets the inside position. Boy, Ted, the first four minutes, that's as, it's, it's as well as I've seen Notre Dame executing yeah. their half-court offense. Another six for six. I guess that says something, doesn't it? Another one by Hurd. Lieber's got an offensive board. And Ellery out with it. Stripped by Woods and a foul on Ellery. Or is that on... I guess oh, it's on Randy Woods, on I Woods? believe. Yes. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, the guy that's going to do all the hammering inside for LaSalle is Milko Lieber, because when you're taking all those three-point shots, he's about the only one left to rebound. Well, the great start for the Irish, 13-3. It's called it's Channel America and is intended for the private non-commercial use of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, retransmission, or other use of the pictures and accounts of this event without the express written consent of Sports Channel America is prohibited. LaSalle has missed eight shots in a row. Notre Dame has made all six. And that's your story. The amazing thing about it, Ted, is in talking with Speedy Morris last night and Joe Mahalik, the assistant coach, both of them told me how well they are playing defensively, and that's what they've been so happy about. But boy, Notre Dame has operated beautifully. Yeah, not the first four minutes. Although it must also be pointed out that LaSalle has not played uh -oh. the national schedule that Notre Dame has played. There you are absolutely right. It's no knock on LaSalle. No. Just... Ellery has it roll off, it'll go to the line. But Notre Dame is a little more tested team, I yeah. guess, is the point sure. here. Yeah, they're, they're, LaSalle is in the Metro Atlantic Athletic Conference, 8-1 uh, and one in the conference, but the caliber of competition, I agree, because you take a look at Notre Dame's schedule and look at what they've got to go with the last 11 games, and you know what's in front of them. Foul there on Hurd, so that's five already on LaSalle. And Ellery to the line. Rick Sorrell halftime report coming up tonight. We'll have Leandro Riley's Olympic news and notes, as well as Notre Dame news and notes. And there's uh, well, look at what Notre Dame has to deal with in the next three weeks. A lot of games in a few, very few amount of days. Well, you got a Creighton team that's right up there in the Missouri Valley Conference. You got DePaul that's on a five or six game winning streak. You know Temple in the Atlantic 10 Conference having another good year. lead by 11. Boy, now that, that I want to tell you is an interesting match because they have Tower guarding Randy Woods out on the wing. Heard with another one, rimming it out. 
it, it, it's been almost 90% three-point shooting thus far by LaSalle. Maybe a little too much. And Notre Dame is hitting everything. Tower makes it 16 to three. The three-point shooting is fine, but I would think LaSalle would be, well, there's a decent one. Over didn't have help from his screen there. Long rebound to President, knocked out by the Irish. I mean, they're not being patient at all. No, oh, not at all. But see, that's not their game. They're going to take those three-point shots, and it's not like they're not open to get them. They're just flat out missing them. Well, oh, there's a layup missed by Woods inside, and then President got the rebound and was bumped. On the floor. On the floor. Out of bounds. That's the first Irish foul. And they signal that a man that doesn't exist, so I'm not really sure who that was on. <laughs> Referee that's, signal that's exactly what Jack yeah. Lloyd said. The, the signal is of a number that yeah. does not exist. <laughs> You're right. The signal was uh, now. That, that's a tough thing in officiating. Yeah. Look at see because John Carr is talking to Sam Licklider. I did it for 20 years, and when you look at Digger saying something to John Carr, when you lose the yeah. foul, you know it's really tough. Yeah. <laughs> They've got it on John Ross. Or Joe Ross, is it? John Ross. John Ross. Uh -huh. First okay. Irish foul. All right, now we can play. 16 to 3, Notre Dame. Five and a half minutes in. Uh, yeah, 44. Overton got fouled, and he'll go to the line. As Bennett got him. See, the interesting thing, Ted, is they are shooting, as you said, nothing but three-point shots. You know the long shot, the long rebound, and they are taking long, long shots. So even when you've got Leverst and you've got President as the only two rebounders in there, it still affects them because the rebounds are coming out so far that it takes some of their effectiveness away from them. One over there. There's points in five minutes for LaSalle. Overton averaging almost 26 points a game. Tonight he'll pass Kenny Durant, who was a great LaSalle player of the 70s. And he'll move into seventh place on the all-time school scoring list. Ellery for three. The Irish actually miss one, but they get the red rebound. Wow! My goodness! That needed a 29 cent stamp, didn't it? I mean, Woods, he looks at a film, he won't believe how far out he was on that shot. He Long won't distance it. is the next best thing to being there, Ted. Wow! I think as a coach, you got to say something about that. That's just a bad shot. There's President hitting one. Roderick President ending a streak of 12 straight missed shots by LaSalle. So it is 18 to 7, Notre Dame. Now, they've gone out of the man to man and they're going into a LaSalle, I mean, and gone into his own. Notre Dame was really operating against that man to man defense. And they don't have a very strong inside game. Leverst was taken out at that last time out with his two fouls. They have a, a little bit of a slider player in Don Shelton in there. Ellery, good fake, and he just misses getting it to drop. But a good fake by Ellery got Shelton up. That's where Ellery is at his best. He is obviously their best inside-outside player. He is so big and strong and physical inside that, boy, when he gets that ball in position, there aren't many times he's going to get it up on the glass. Ray Schultz checks in. He's been getting a lot of time for them, Ted. He's a big body with a banger, a stick-back guy, and he'll come in for Milko a lot. He didn't come in for him on that occasion, but he is getting a lot more playing time, and I watched him in practice last night. They're expecting some things. He's only a sophomore. He's coming along. They're happy with the progress that young man's making. But they're, uh, Notre Dame is pounding him inside right now. Oh, they need you bet. some presence in there. Of course, Notre Dame without Ellis hasn't been able to pound too many teams. No. Seven points already for Ellery, and he's off back-to-back 18-point -back games. Yeah, that's token pressure because Notre Dame's not going to be able to do too much with pressure defense against Overton and Woods. There's no way they're going to stop them from bringing it up. And 
side. President with the maneuver, and a travel is called. Wipe it out. President took over Lionel Simmons' starting spot this year, but he's not a scorer. The points go elsewhere. played without a substitution. This lineup's been so strong, Digger hasn't wanted to make a move yet. Good ball movement, but Ellery missed, and Schultz clears it. Overton, and that's what he did so well for Notre Dame last year. Just it can't stop him when he gets a little head of steam one-on-one. Exactly, one -on -one. exactly, and the thing that hurt Notre Dame last year is that the back people did not step over and take that charge or distract him, and you'll recall that. And that's what Digger was so upset about. The one thing the LaSalle coaches told me, Ted, is when they're not playing well, it's because they are impatient. They start freelancing and don't get enough touches, and I think that's the point you were making about five minutes ago. Well, they just came out and I mean, fired away, yeah, right? Absolutely. I just don't think they had it. I mean, this. Wow. I mean, he makes it. Overton makes it. You say, good shot. But my goodness, that is just. I mean, with 43 on the shot clock, 30 foot shots. Are, well, you can take that 45 second clock tonight. 20 to 10 for Notre Dame. David Sweet and Brooks Boyer are in. Ross and Singleton out. David Sweet right up. And Overton clears it. Here's see how Notre Dame can fare. Well, another one by Overton. Well, two in a row, and all of a sudden, that changes the game quickly, doesn't it? You. you look at the way Notre Dame's been playing, and look at the way LaSalle's been playing, and it's only a seven-point yeah. game. But that's the three-point weapon. That's you, right. You can lose the lead in a hurry, and you get it back in a hurry. Tower walk. Now, here's where Notre Dame's going to get a very much-needed timeout right now. Before LaSalle runs a couple of more in a row. 20 to 13 Irish, a strong start for Notre Dame. LaSalle is shooting 4 of 16, Ted, for only 25%. Notre Dame is shooting 8 of 13 for 62%. LaSalle has made their last three. Notre Dame has missed their last three. Doug Overton, number 44, mm -hmm. has been shaved into the side of his head. Doug Overton played at Dobbins Tech High School in Philadelphia. A high school teammate as a traveling call there against Bron Holland to 51 who's in for LaSalle. It's the last thing that Bron Holland wants to do and it's the last thing Speedy Morris wants him to do is to get out away from the basket and put the basketball on the floor. That's not his role. Oh, that's a double, double dribble. dribble a good ball. call. Yep. Overton still in the game there with Woods. Overton played with Hank Gathers and with Bo Kimball and on the same high school team. And Overton has dedicated this entire season to the memory of Gathers. He, was, he and Lionel Simmons, also from Philadelphia, extremely overcome last year during the game. Here's Woods bombing again. And Holland got a rebound, but they're going to call a foul on LaSalle. Foul on Schultz. And that's the seventh on LaSalle, so this will be a one and one. Amazing what Overton says, uh, the influence of Gathers in his life was. He says, you know, they'd get to a day like Saturday and everybody want to sleep in. And Hank Gathers come over his house and wake him up, get him out of bed and say, no, you got to get out and work. we got to work to play this game. See, and that's what I've said so many times about younger people. They look and they watch the games and think, isn't this great? But very few of them ever realize how many hours and hours and hours are spent getting to that point. Tower missed the front end, but the Irish steal it back, and Bennett has eight. Schultz had the rebound. They stripped it right out of his hand. Overton operating against Bennett. Bennett's been guarding him while Singleton has been out. Holland. And bodies go down, but Brooks Boyer out with the ball. Irish have Joe Ross in the game. Good pass from Brooks Boyer to Joe Ross. That is good recognition by Brooks Boyer, boy. Two freshmen that really executed beautifully, and that's a good timeout by Speedy. And two possessions in a row bothered him, and we'll pause now for a regional break. Notre Dame with an 11-point lead, and will return on Sports Channel America after these messages. Pool. 
Steve Miserak, the master. Pretty boy Floyd. It's college basketball Saturday night. Muffet McGraw's Lady Irish won their 16th game last night against Loyola of Chicago. They'll take their number 20 national ranking to Knoxville for a battle with the powerhouse Lady Vols of Tennessee, and you'll see it at 5 Eastern live Saturday on Sports Channel. Chad, I really liked here what the freshmen did because they kept their composure. Now watch Brooks Boyle. He's going to wind up with the ball. He stayed under control. Look at it. He saw the men come out on him. He saw Russ. Knew he had the opening. Went toward the basket. And that was a nice bounce pass. A great entry pass. Look at the shooting difference. Wow. And of course, so many threes in that for factor for LaSalle. Oh, sure. I tell you, live by the sword and you die right. by it, don't you? But that's why you can't ever feel comfortable against no. a team like this, because they can chew up a deficit real fast. But her name is Ellery in the game with Joe Ross and Sweet, Boyer, and Bennett. New batter got fouled. Or excuse me, that's Jack Hurd, and will be at the line as the foul is on Boyer. One thing about Jack Hurd, I thought he was more of a standstill suitor the last year or two, but boy, he can come off. I watched two or three films on them, and he comes off those screens and picks and curls, and he can shoot on the move. Hurd, you see it's 17 a game. He's a very quiet guy. He's overshadowed by the backboard. And that's the same with Overton, as you said, boy. He was in the shadows of Lionel Simmons for so long, but as you said last year, he took over that game. And he's going to be a number one pick, or at least high number two pick. Warriors pass, but President read it, stole it. But Shelton was not ready for the handoff, and the Irish will get it back. LaSalle this year has been fairly good with the basketball. Again, in their league, they've have not turned it over very much. That's one of the things about a Speedy Morris team. They don't, and they're only averaging 13 turnovers a game. It's been very good. Well, Sal only lost two games last year. They lost to Loyola Marymount, and then they lost to Clemson in the second round of the NCAA tournament by four points. They were unbeaten 19-0 and in their league. Their losses this year have been to Florida State, Temple, and Iona, which was a conference loss. Illegal pick on Joe Ross. He was trying to set the screen so that the defensive man couldn't get out on the wingman for Notre Dame, but he moved, and that's a good call. Well, John Ross checks in for Joe. The Twins are celebrating their 20th birthday today. And Overton, and they don't even look at the line. It's as if they have a little sonar that says, I'm close enough. Overton. Tough shot. Oh, but look at the shooter's bounce for Overton. He has 10. Sometimes you worry about a player like an Overton and like Woods that are, of course, have pro prospects in mind. If you think they might not be trying to show some of the pro scouts, they can hit the pro three. the Irish and David Sweet is called for a charging foul and LaSalle defense beginning to crank it up a notch here. Tell you, the way they're shooting right now I wasn't quite sure I agreed with that call and I still don't. There is no way that Randy Woods had the angle right there on Damon Sweet. That's not a good call. That is, that is a good shot that we got right there because Woods had to be at least another step over before he was going to draw that charge against Sweet. Well, they just keep firing away, and it's Woods. Well, LaSalle is within four. Woods is at two threes, and Overton's hit two threes. They are using the press. They're extending the defense oh. more right now, see? It's like a 1-1-2-1. One, one, one. Then they drop into a 2-2-1 two, two, kind of, and right at the 10-second line is where they're trying to put all the pressure on Notre Dame. That was a rare errant pass from Singleton to turn the ball over. Notre Dame 16 to 3, but LaSalle has caught fire. But Woods really off on that. That's, 
that's good judgment by Elrod. He just saw the opening, stepped right out. He, he put himself right into position to get that pass and then put it right up. President inside put the ball down and Ross slapped it away. And it is held and possession will go to LaSalle. I just, Ted, I keep looking over at Speedy to see what he's doing when they keep shooting those three-point shots. And he just has, it hasn't bothered him one bit. He just said, I still hate the three-point shot because I think it's too close. But even though I'm no Phi Beta Kappa, he said, I'm not dumb either. We've got the people who can hit it, so we're going to take it. Well, if he thinks it's too close, then he ought to tell his kids to get up to oh, the line boy. when they shoot it. They're shooting wow. five feet behind it. You are kidding. Here's Bennett with Overton chasing, but Bennett. Overton tried to intimidate, but then not foul, and he got caught. Take a look at the end of the action, and don't look anywhere but down below, and we'll see whether he got him. I guess he got the hands on him, and you've got to protect, as I've said a number of times, the man with the basketball. Doug Overton had no chance of doing anything then unless he was going to try to pin it on the glass, I thought, Ted. And if that was the case, he should have just tried to distract Bennett and leave it go, and in the process, he picked up a foul. It's two on Overton, and Bennett with 11 in the first half. Notre Dame now runs off five straight, and the lead is back to nine. Isn't it ironic that we talked about Elber Bennett and his point production right before the start of the game? Having a good yep. first half. Overton. Oh. And Tower has the rebound. Sal LaSalle has not brought Levers back in the game since he left early with those two fouls. <laughs> Seven minutes remaining in the first half. Notre Dame by nine. down low on the same side of Singleton. Now they force it in and it's turned over. The Explorers steal it. Just no spacing there at all. Just trying to force a pass with no spacing and they didn't have to do it. Oh, Overton's called for traveling. He's going to flip it to Woods on the right wing and then changed his mind and you see what an outstanding year he's had. 15th leading scorer in the country and I want to tell you except for the two three-pointers he hit in a row, Ted, he's struggling. You know what's most amazing about Overton this year? He has only been on the bench for 10 minutes of basketball all year. And you're going to get a push off here on... In 17 LaSalle games, Ted, they've got 685 minutes of playing time, and he's played 675 minutes out of the 685. They had an overtime game against Penn, that is almost unbelievable. <laughs> Damon Sweet, second foul. That puts Notre Dame over the limit. And her hits the front. And don't forget the Dirk Sorrell halftime report coming up tonight. We'll have Leanne Riley's Olympic news and notes. We'll have Notre Dame news and notes as well, including football signing day today. All coming up at halftime. Four points for Jack Hurd. Notre Dame by seven. A 1-2-2 two, two press. Oh. Damon landed in the right spot. Now, if he'd have landed in the back court, it would have been an over and back because it's where you last were. If he'd had Bob Lanier's feet, he'd been <laughs> He'd have been over. You know exactly over. right. Ron Holland, get, pick oh. and roll. And the foul, Overton, will go to the line. And that's a play that Overton should have converted on. He lost his concentration. He expected that he was going to get hit there, but I think he thought that he was going to get... Now, look at... There, see, he caught Tim yeah. Singleton. Because Tim thought he was going out to the three-point area, and so Tim was overplaying the pass to that side, and that was good recognition by Overton because he backed off and going the other way as soon as he caught Singleton leaning toward the three-point line. That's actually a strategy you would think that LaSalle could employ as this game goes on because oh, they've got Notre Dame so boy. thinking about the three. Absolutely, or at least to step up. If there's some right. twos that you're going to, you know, you, they're giving them that. 
they should be able to get free on some cuts to the basket. There's the 1-2-2 again. Two, two again. Falling right back into a 2-3 right out of it. Down to eight on the shot clock. Sweet and a create. Round it out and cleared by Shelton. So Sal can get within two or three here. Do you believe that shot? I really don't. They, I, I'll be honest with you, this team can't, they, they couldn't play against the top caliber competition in the country shooting like that. I mean, this is too far away. They are 3 of 12 on three-point shot. Now they got 51 pushing off, I think. Sure, it's exactly what happened. They fronted Gron Holland, and he just put the, the hand right on the back and got the call, and it's a good call. Holland commits the ninth LaSalle foul, so this will be a one-and-one. Watch where this Watch. is. Now look where he is. Look where he is. I mean, that's long range. The only thing, as you mentioned earlier, the only thing it does do, if you're not a big team, it does give you a better chance to rebound. Yep. You get long rebounds. And that's why it's so important for Notre Dame guards to get into bodies. And, and they've got to do some rebounding because people like Tower and Ellery, if they're inside, probably aren't going to do a lot of rebounding. I just don't know that you could play against, I mean, the, the NCAA tournament type of competition with shot selection like we've seen in the first half. Well, I don't know what they're shooting on three-point shots right now, Ted, but yeah, I, I couldn't agree with you more. They're just no, especially if you're not, if you're shooting about 20%, which is, I guess, right around where they must be. Because you're never going to get fouled out there. They have nope. gotten the line eight times but in the first half, but they're not going to get fouled shooting out there. See, Overton, this is what he could do. To me, rather than gunning the threes, you let clear out every other time, let him do it. Then Hurd follows. Tell you one thing they'll do, boy. You play for Speedy Morris, they'll, they'll hustle and they'll work hard. Well, they got Knapp there on defense, and look at Sweet go high for that rebound. Well, Sal fell asleep on defense on that last possession. Bennett had a wide open three. Notre Dame by five, four minutes in the half. And Sweet hits. First basket for Damon Sweet. Damon Sweet at four. He is having another great shooting year. 58%. Woods for three, and that's with Bennett right there. Third three of the half for Woods. Heard fell getting back, Notre Dame could not take advantage. The whole LaSalle coaching staff standing in front of us, so we're not getting much at this end. You're, you're in a bad spot here, James. I am. Why don't you just tell him down in front? <laughs> oh, man, I'm telling you, it's really tough when you're, when you're blinded. And I don't watch the monitor, as you well know. I've got to be looking at that floor from my own playing and coaching background, but I can't. Now, we see he just to the left of the LaSalle bench, and then all four of their coaches are standing up during the play. Doug Overton just committed his third foul, and here's a rarity. Overton is coming out of the game with 3.20 to play in the half. We mentioned he's only been out of 10 minutes of action all year, and he comes out here with three fouls. And it's 10 on LaSalle, so this will be a two-shot foul for Bennett. Looking at the only player to start every game for Notre Dame this year, Elmer Bennett. And he was now within a point of his per game average in the first half. And his 13th point gives the Irish a six point lead as they get to timeout. LaSalle backcourt. 
operating at their best. <laughs> well, Randy Woods is three of eight on three pointers. Look at it. Now they backed off just one step they backed off of him, and as soon as they did, that ball went right up on the glass. Now LaSalle, Ted, still only shooting 29%. Notre Dame still 13 to 20 at 65%. Notre Dame's only taken two-point shots. LaSalle has taken two three-point shots. LaSalle has taken 13. That's an interesting stat, though, there, even with the three-point shooting, because Bennett has 13. Notre Dame's backcourt has done all right. But Overton is out for the rest of the half, we think, with three fouls. Neubauer, 24 in the game for LaSalle. In with Hurd missing, but then Shelton is fouled. And that'll put Don Shelton at the line as they get Kevin Ellery on his first. 19. So Shelton, a junior from Trenton, New Jersey, a 63% foul shooter. LaSalle's conference this year, the Metro Atlantic Conference, lost three teams. They were a 12-team conference in the past. Holy Cross, Fordham, and Army all left. They're a nine-team conference right now, and there's been talk, speculation, LaSalle might look to realign. There's been some conversations about the Atlantic 10, which will lose Penn State next year in basketball. Sweet. Sweet lost it when he went up. But Tower gets it back, and then Tower's called for trampling. Not quite sure if Sweet did. Sweet must have just lost the grip on the ball yeah, when I, he went up. And I'll be honest with you, I thought he had gotten hit, but he mustn't have, Ted, because the, the official was standing right there. I didn't mean to imply that he did. But you're right, I think the ball just came out and he lost his concentration when he was getting ready to yeah. slam it. From our angle, we're looking through the defender. It looks like he got hit, but there was no whistle and no complaints. Boy, a three-pointer a three right now is gonna bring this game into a one-pointer, if you can believe it. It's still 2.30 left. Carl Cozen in for the first time for Notre Dame. Newbauer. Heard. 12 to shoot. Look at Ellery really hammering him outside. President. And Tower lost the rebound. He got it stuck momentarily against the glass. The Notre Dame is doing a very good job. And Speedy's yelling, go back door, because Notre Dame is really overplaying. Oh, nice drive. Charge. No basket, Don Shelton. Boy, after a good create there by Neubauer, they get no basket. Well, I was waiting to see how long it would be. Speedy doesn't leave that coat on for 40 minutes, I'll tell you. Finally, he's, saying, yeah, he's, he's agreeing with the call. He just said to him, yeah. go straight up sure. and don't strike. Try to lean in and shoulder somebody out. Bennett coming out. And Ellery goes down, post up. Singleton has the lane. Tim Singleton is second basket. Of course, if LaSalle could stay right here, if they could even stay six down without Overton at the half, they'd still feel pretty good about things. See, they haven't got many people on the floor right now that can create Ted. And LaSalle runs that long rebound down, and a great play by Bennett to anticipate. And now Bennett in the open floor, and that one was a tip. No, it's out of bounds to LaSalle. Boy, I have been impressed with the defense that Notre Dame has yeah. been playing the last four or five minutes. They have taken LaSalle right out of its offense. They have been doing a terrific job. Bennett made a great defensive anticipation. Jack Hurd going in. Jack Hurd on his, one of his few drives to the hole has eight points. Notre Dame now no shot clock. And let's see if they hold it. No signal from the bench for one. They're going to play it. And stolen. Woods took it away from Bennett. Beats Neubauer. Oh! And 
One chip doesn't go. Hurd got hammered. Woods gets it in. Basket counts and a foul. Oh, and this game has really changed here in the last four minutes, even with Overton out. Watch. Watch Woods now, right down in the lower part of your screen. There's the heavy work being done by the big guys. Then Woods just standing right there at the right time. The ball right into his hands, and he had the presence of mind, boy. He knew he was going to get hit. He just got right up there, and boy, that's a big foul, the third for Elmer Bennett. Yeah, that is big. So Bennett has three, Overton for LaSalle, three, and here's Notre Dame's last shot with a one-point lead. I'm a little surprised the Irish did not hold for one in the last possession. Yeah. Wind up paying the price on a three-point play by Woods. Hosen with an air ball. And LaSalle will have a chance here. It'll be Woods. That'll count. Oh, Woods just missing to end the half. And a good first half it was. Notre Dame played well through most of it, but LaSalle with Speedy Moore to the help, charged on at the end, even with Doug Overton out with three fouls. Well, just jumped all over LaSalle. And LaSalle goes six minutes without scoring, you know. Now, here's Elmer Bennett. We talked about him before the game. You must have been clairvoyant because that's what you call a big first half. There's a real fine penetration to the basket right there. Now we got Keith Tower. I said 12, re uh, 12 points and eight rebounds in the last seven games. Look at now, this is where he turns right in. Look at, draws the contact right there up on the glass. That's good recognition by him. Now, not a big first half, I didn't think, Ted, for Doug Overton. I didn't think, I didn't think he was simply in sync. He was three of nine, had 12 points. I'm not taking that away from him but he just didn't do the kinds of things that he's capable of in the first 20 minutes, and he's got three fouls. Now, movement and recognition are always important, and there is a good job of both. Good movement, good recognition, and both freshmen, I thought, did a very good job. And again, here's Elmer Asal, four more field goals by Notre Dame. You see the three-point shooting, five of 17 for LaSalle. But it's Notre Dame ball with a one-point lead. And Ellery makes it four. Twelve for Ellery. And the Irish stay with Singleton on Overton. And Tower flashing out on Woods. And that is going to be out of bounds. And Singleton did a nice job of blocking out there. Exactly where we started uh, in the first 20 minutes, right? Notre Dame comes yeah. down, gets right into it, and LaSalle comes down and fires the one pass and a shot. And they just, when Singleton's in the game, he's the man that's running around with Overton. Stay right with him. Zone defense again by LaSalle. Oh, Notre Dame with some big shooting. Starting up. Same way they did in the first half. About the well, they were six of six in the first half. Now they're two of two right out of the starting gate, and that's the way to get out. Yeah. Especially when LaSalle made a run at him. And the oh, nice, oh, nice overplay. Great job. Whoa! Bennett got hammered by Broderick President. I must say something. When we watch this replay again, Bennett Digger wants it to be a hard flagrant foul. Watch how wide Bennett goes again. He exactly. He did not have to do that, and there's a guy that was trying to pin that ball up in the glass. You've heard me say a lot of times that they're going to come down, and the jumpers and leapers love to get it up on the glass and pin it, but you are so right. Instead of, I guess, isn't the shortest distance between two points? You bet, and he took as wide an angle as that as you could have possibly taken, and I really can't tell you, Ted, why he did that, unless you have an idea. Well, I just noticed me that for the third or fourth time this year that Bennett on a breakaway has done that. He runs that big wide loop. And the one, reason, the, the one reason you want to get into the middle of the floor, Ted, is because you want to cut off the angle of the defensive man, and then he's always chasing you from behind. Now, you don't want to lay the ball up on the glass from right straight in front because too many times you can miss. You want to get it off the glass. 18 points for Bennett, but he has played... An outstanding game, and Speedy Morris uses his second of just three timeouts because Notre Dame has scored the first eight points of the second half. We'll return on Sports Channel after these messages. Good morning, Mrs. Jenks. Got a Western Union here for Mr. Jenks. 
Hope it's good. Friday night comes from Denver. High school basketball as Manuel plays Montebello live at 8 Eastern. High school game of the week from Denver on Sports Channel America. Come on, Irish, come on, Andy. The first eight points of the second half for Notre Dame. Five by Bennett, three by Ellery. And of course, Speedy Morris to a quick timeout. And coming down the stretch, LaSalle will have just one timeout remaining. Notre Dame doing a lot of switching in their man-to-man, -man, which has really been effective. Uh, almost thrown away, and then Hurd did a great job to save it and hit a three. Boy, that ball belonged to Singleton, but Jack Hurd somehow got it and then hit a three. There's a big play for LaSalle. Good feed, and Ellery, basket counts and a foul. Boy, I keep saying that that young man is very difficult to defend against because he can take you outside and it's tough for the big men to guard him. He can get you inside because he's so big and strong and that's why they call him the pit bull. And he has started the last three games and he has had back-to-back 18-point -back games against Boston College and Duke. Doesn't he remind you, I mean, his build a lot like Adrian Dantley when he played here? And a lot of people talked about that when he first got here his freshman year. So the Irish up by eight again, two minutes into the second half. Levers, who only played four minutes of the first half. Starting with Sal Center, now Overton, and he got bodied by Ellery before the shot. See, and Kevin didn't have to do that. Kevin Ellery was playing very good defense right there, and all he had to do was to keep sliding toward that baseline, and he would have taken that angle away from him, but he got him with the body. Oh, nice little cut in the lane, and Overton got the roll. One of the things I like about Overton so much is a beautiful little roll and touch on a shot. Last year in Philadelphia, he scored 18 points in the second half of what was a close game. The LaSalle won. Ellery hits for the Irish. Good switch over. Boy, Elverton did a nice job there to set that play up. He had the defender going left and a quick turn back to the right. He was in. And now Singleton took a little bump there and lost it out. See, Jack Hurd is matched up again, and Speedy's spending all his time talking to Jack Hurd because he isn't going to guard, I don't think, Kevin Elric, either outside or inside, and Notre Dame's going to Elric. Overton, long rebound to Bennett. There was a case where Overton took the shot and peeled back. Sure. He charges in. He He'll gets the rebound. Back, right? Tower. And a foul on the shot, Keith Tower. Bad foul by Levers, his third. And I happen to think it's a pretty good foul. Now watch, I swore I saw him get hit. See, right on the elbow. That is a good call by Sam Licklider. And I don't know why Milko said and, and, and raised such a fuss. Now watch, he's going to get him right on the elbow right there. That is a good, that's good camera work, and that's a good yeah, call. It's a good call and a bad foul. Sure, and a bad foul. Notre Dame started out the first half six of six. They are now five of five in this half. Tower has eight, and the Irish with another spurt lead by nine. Kind of been a game of spurts, hasn't it? Yeah. Randy Woods. The only problem for Notre Dame, not a problem, but they've been in this position so many times this year, only to be caught. Those Those people on the, good. You're right, the people on the floor have played a lot of minutes, yeah. so there's still 16 to go in this game. Closing out against the tough teams Notre Dame has played has been tough for them. Zone defense. They play some 3-2, they play some 2-3. Bennett. Elmer Bennett with that good little quick move. 20 points for Bennett tonight. His best offensive game in a while. Overton got hammered, basket will count and a foul on Singleton. 
Now that's that's a big time play right there. Singleton could not have played defense any better than he did. And you know, the point I was going to make earlier, Ted, is the collegiate watch. Watch the 180. There it is. Now watch Singleton. He played that as well as you could possibly play it and even got some body on Overton. That's the first foul shot missed by LaSalle tonight. They had made 11 in a row. up to 10. Kevin seems to like the fact that he's starting Ted and getting a lot more playing time and he's responded. <laughs> the two-pointer president missing and Tower rebounded. Leonard Amos scored 20 points in the first five minutes of this half. And that one knocked away by Bennett but taken back by Levers with Woods. Woods and Ellery rebounds. Woods did not do a good job on that break. You are absolutely right. He had a chance to bounce that pass to Overton, who was wide open and out in front of him where you knew he saw. And then running the baseline. Tower, oh, turning over the shorter man, and Tower hits. Boy, there have been spurts in this game where Notre Dame has executed in its half-court offense as well as I've seen it execute all year long. For a spurt in the first half and the spurt right now. Woods short, Bennett. Looks to push it, good. Bounds on the left wing, but LaSalle got a hand on it, and Neubauer comes away with it. Here's Woods. Now Tower got out on him that time. So Neubauer will take it. Way short. But so short that it surprised the Notre Dame rebounders. And Woods hits. 17 for Woods. His fourth three-pointer. So the Irish lead is 9 at 13.30 to play in the, in the ball game. Look at the hustle, right there. Milko Leverst. Right there, nobody near him, he's going to take it. He's taking him a lot further out than that, and yeah. he knew that he had the room to take it. That's not a bad three-point shot there. Oh, look at that good, quick bounce pass up to Hurd, who had an open three. Damon Sweet in for the Irish rebound. Sweet, the only change for Notre Dame. Notre Dame has been very patient in half-court offense. They're really trying to break that defense down, and I think they've been doing a pretty good job. Bennett. That's his spot. That is fourth on the all-time Notre Dame field goal percentage list. Damon Sweet. He probably won't catch the leader. John Schumacher, 61% shooter in his career at Notre Dame. The Irish have made all nine of their shots in the second half, and John Ross fouls Jack Hurd. And the 24 attempts is more than LaSalle would normally, I think, even be expected to take at this time of the game. But the key, Notre Dame's making their two-point yeah. shots. And their three-point shooting, Ted, I said they've taken 407. 350 of them have been taken by Hurd, Overton, and Woods. Well, it better be if Levers takes him, then Speedy probably had <laughs> Yeah, there are some people there that aren't going to take him. Oh, Hurd misses two foul shots. So the Irish get a break there, up with the ball and an 11 point lead. <laughs> going to 
go up there as he had come out behind a tower screen. Well, that's a tough shot with Woods on him. Sweet crash, he kept that ball alive. Well, there's the active Keith Tower. There's the kid that has really become active the last seven or eight games, and that's why he's getting rebounds. He said, you can, you're amazed at what can happen when you're active. Look at him. 12 points for Tower. And Notre Dame has matched its biggest lead when they were out 16 to three. Missing a three, and here's Bennett. Homer veers outside and takes a three. And Randy Woods with it for LaSalle. And her travel. Caught it on the run. And travels. 11-25 remaining in a strong second half by the Irish. They lead by 13. Sports Channel from the Valley, Tulsa and Southern Illinois in the morning, then in the afternoon, Loyola and Xavier from the MCC on Sports Channel America. Take a look at Keith Tower. Nice turnaround jumper. He said, I'm trying to be active at both ends, and it's surprising how things open up for you when you are active. And we've said before, he went to Pete Newell's camp, and he also went to the Boston Celtic camp, and there was a story in the paper about him the other night, Ted, that he spent an awful lot of time working with Kevin McHale. Oh, it's a good person to learn from. I would say so. And nobody works harder than Kevin McHale. People in basketball should know more as we look at the shooting. Look what Notre Dame has done in the second oh. half. I'll tell you, their half-court execution, I, I want to say it because I have to give them credit. It's as well, they're shooting with so much confidence, and they're getting a lot of touches, they're playing in control, and they're just breaking down the LaSalle defense. Sweet had heard fly by, and Levers with the rebound. Overton using Big Bron Holland for a screen. Steps out. Look at that bounce, Mike. Good three-pointer. A three-pointer. Somebody's been rigging right. Allen gets a three. Brooks Boyer in for the Irish. With Singleton. So Bennett is out right now. Sweet, Ross, and Tower. Tower. Hard bank a little too hard and then crashing. They're going to get John Ross on the offensive board, his third foul. Not a bad move by Tower. I think maybe he could have taken that jumper without putting the ball on the floor because I think he's going to be more effective standing still shooting than putting it and taking it off the dribble. Notre Dame is matching. Last couple of possessions, they've gotten out of their man-to-man -man and gone into a zone. Overton with a nice play with a pass off Levers and out of bounds. Now, that's not going to be a tight zone. That's going to be a zone that's going to be extended because they're going to get out on those three-point shooters and let them, if there's going to be anything open, it'll be inside and not on the perimeter. But can you, does Notre Dame have the quickness defensively to get out 23 feet? That's a question. They're going to have to. They're not shooting 19-9. Tower foul, and that's the fourth on Levers. I'll tell you, Milko has had two or three fouls that, I mean, just aren't real, real good fouls for a guy that's a junior and has as much experience as he has. There's a guy, he's playing Tower out on the floor, and Tower's got his back to the basket, and he's bodying him and reaching in, taking all the chances in the world to get a foul. 14 fouls on LaSalle. John Ross with his first basket. This is the best offensive game Notre Dame has had since the West but Virginia game here three weeks ago. By far. That was Ellis' last game, and they hit a career high that night. Tower's just now starting, Ted, to get a little tired. He's starting to breathe a lot harder than he was earlier, and there's still nine minutes to go in this game. Brooks Boyer. Man-to-man -man defense. Oh, that was a good catch. John Ross with a bad catch of a bad pass, right? Tower. Tower! 14 for Keith Tower. 
Richard Boyer plays the big wad of gum in his mouth. I can't believe that. I haven't seen many basketball players chewing gum while they play. Ron Holland, they left him alone. And Singleton snatches the loose ball away. So we said all those guards were going to get those rebounds. Boy, LaSalle's people haven't been following their shots very well, have they, Ted? No. That was another one right there. If Holland had fouled that yep. shot, it would have come right back to him. And they're getting to a point in the game where they think they start needing to. They're yes. down. This is the biggest lead at 14. We have 8.20 to play. Boyer is going to shoot it, but he couldn't <laughs> catch it. He was going to shoot it before he caught it, right? And Tower hits another! 16 for Keith Tower. Now we talked about LaSalle's big three, but it is Notre Dame's three that are taking over. Bennett, Tower, and Ellery have combined for 55 points, and Speedy Morris calls his last timeout. the superstars of the Universal Wrestling Federation. Then it's Jim Gibbons' Secret Fantasy, the Sports Channel Kickboxing Tour, <laughs> and the Sports Cream Pro Boxing Tour, Mondays on Sports Channel America. Ted, Tim Singleton, as you know, is second on the all-time assist list oh. for Notre Dame. He has 11 assists tonight, 11, and he's got 473 coming into this game. Jim, I think Speedy Morris made an emotional reaction and decision there and a tactical error. I would say so. Tell him why. Yeah, we look at the bad shooting. In five seconds, LaSalle would have gotten a free timeout for TV and a dead yep. ball. Instead, he used up his last timeout of the game. And maybe, because LaSalle is not on television often, not aware, although Sam Licklider, the lead official, had told Speedy previously he had only one timeout left. But after eight minutes, you would have gotten a television timeout. Spoiler missing. Overton with it. Plus now LaSalle with no timeouts remaining. And they're down 16 points. That's Boyer a good call. Yep. That's a good call by Dan Taylor. Brooks Boyer was playing. He was in good position. He was able to move his feet and do what he wanted. But watch him. He's going to put his hands all over him. Right there. Good camera work right. You cannot do that, obviously. That's one of the rules. But also, number two, you got to protect the man with the basketball. Hey, 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 hey. Well, they're not going to be able to wait around too long now, Ted, before they get the shots up. Some of the ones they were taking in the first half, they better get up now. Well, this man's going to take over. He just got the fourth foul on Bennett. So, Overton and Bennett play up until here at 7.13 remaining in the game without fourth foul on either man. But now Bennett gets it, and he'll go for a few moments. Be replaced by Singleton. Sixth foul on Notre Dame. It's interesting that you said that Bennett and Ellery and Tower had 55 points out of the 69 because Overton and, uh, and Woods and Hurd had 32 of the 36 points that LaSalle had at halftime. There's Overton's story tonight. He has 17. Woods has 17. And Hurd has 11. Overton has already passed. Now there's a steal. Woods took that errant pass. Ellery did a good job there to close out Woods' three-point try, but he goes up anyway. And Schultz is fouled in the rebound by Tower. Tower's first and the seventh on Notre Dame, so this will be a one-and-one. He one. wears some of the kinds of things. Look at the rebounding for LaSalle, offensively very good in the first half. They were going to stop the penetration of Bennett and Singleton, which they haven't done. They haven't had a chance to run that break because they haven't been getting into it. Notre Dame have done a reasonably good job of containing the backboard. They've done a good job on controlling the boards, and they've gotten into transition defense very well. See, yeah, but the point I was going to make is that's a foul that about five or ten minutes ago I don't think Tower would have made. When you get tired like that, your instincts, you're just that split second behind, and that's what happened that time, and Schultz simply beat him to the basketball. 
Those are the first two foul shots of Ray Schultz's collegiate career. First two successful ones. And we go under seven minutes. There's the one, two, two. Good recognition. Good recognition. Get that big guy and bring him up as the outlet man and get the ball to him and then get into your offense. That's a good matchup for Ellery. That's a good matchup for Ellery if they can get the ball to him. Tim ought to try to plan in a little more though. See, they're forcing him out too far from the basket. A oh, nice great pass. Cut. And Sweet got her ass inside and didn't get the layup. Overton lost the dribble as he tried to go by Singleton. Oh, Notre Dame now will bring it back, and here's where they want to walk that fine line between patience to burn oh, clock yes. but still get good shots. And they did the last time. Boy, that was terrific execution, and what a great pass. And that's the fourth on Overton. Yep, and that's a frustration foul right there. There was no way that he should have fouled Tim Singleton. Uh, watch the hands. He just lost control. There was more that he lost control of the ball, Ted, than it was that Tim right. Singleton stripped it from him. In fairness to Doug Overton, he simply lost the handle on the basketball. There you see how Singleton has picked up his points. And as Jim mentioned, second in career assists at Notre Dame. He won't catch David Rivers. And third in steals. Boyer to Ellery. Yep. That's where Ellery's got to stay. He's letting the precedent put him out a little too far from his comfort zone if he wants to set up inside. He's got to back him in a little more. There's a three by President. And Brooks Boyer has it. Ellery with that last basket, a new career high. 21 points for Kevin Ellery. Little bounce pass, but Sweet walk. Damon Sweet travels. 509 remaining. Bigger saying, boy, stay with it, stay with it. He was getting everything he wanted out of that possession, and then Damon was in just too much of a hurry and didn't put the ball down before he started to move. Well, your time remaining now again, LaSalle with the three-point shooting can score points quickly. Notre Dame still in that zone defense, Tab. Doing a good job with it. They're really, really extending out to the line. Knocked away, but Jack Hurd runs it down. And slapped away from him by Sweet. Intentional foul. Sweet with the basket and an intentional foul on LaSalle. Well, I was going to say, get a stick and kill it. I'll tell you that. Watch. Jack Hurd's going to come back. Now, watch the strip by Sweet. Now, Singleton with the night. Now, Boyer, that's good presence of mind. Now, watch this shot. Oh, man, and he did it with his right hand with his back to the basket. And Sam Licklider is calling an intentional foul, which means that they'll get the free throws, but now they're going to get the ball out of bounds right underneath the basket, not at the 10-second line. Foul on Woods, intentional. I, watching the replay, you know, it's an instinctive call. It looked like he made a play for the ball, though, which would not qualify it as an intentional well, foul. It, it goes without saying that the LaSalle bench wasn't yeah. very happy about the call. I but I, I'm sure that they can lose their objectivity yeah. at the same time. Never us, though, Jim. No. Never us. Never. Damon Sweet makes it a four-point play, and Notre Dame will get possession as they've blown it open. But still... 441 and the way LaSalle plays the game, you can't really feel like it's put away yet. Yeah, I tell you, they, they, they've just done it. Notre Dame has. You know, you haven't noticed that the lead is as big as it is right now, the way they've been playing. The Irish will keep it. But you'd love to see them here is be able to pull the ball out and run the clock under four oh minutes. Boy. Now with an 18-point lead, they don't necessarily need to get good shots. Just run clock here. Now they shoot quick. <laughs> Now, Ellery, now you want to, I just say, pull it out here. Now you run for a 18-point lead. Knocked away by Woods, but out of bounds. And Notre Dame will keep it with 28 
seconds on the shot clock. 420 on the game clock. And Speedy Morris's LaSalle Explorers have a seven game winning streak on the line here. Over left is the shot clock. And Sweet inside. That takes care of that. Well for Damon Sweet. In the second half, Levers inside gets the hoop just his second. One thing for Notre Dame this year, Jim, they have been, despite all of the personnel turnovers and changes and injuries, they've been a pretty good shooting team. Yeah, they went through that one stretch, wasn't it, when we were in, doing the Miami game and a couple of others when they were in the, sh the bad shooting slump. But boy, since then, you're right, Ted, they have done a very good job. They've just made, they've made all of their makeable shots tonight. They haven't really made too many difficult ones, but they've made all the ones they should make. I'll tell you one thing. Oh, Ellery with a three. Speedy, Speedy's got five people right there. I think he's waving the flag. Yep, he is. And it's really about over now. The Woods hits a three. 20 points for Woods. He's made five threes tonight. And again for Speedy, he's going to look at this as a non-conference game in the middle of his conference season. And the nice thing about it is he's given these young men a chance to play in a game at Notre Dame. And to get to the 64-14, Hardy is still with Speedy once, and he still knows his conference what's going to do that for him. Well, Sal is 8-1 right now in their conference. I'll tell you, I don't know if you'll agree with me, except for one stretch in the first half, I, I can't pinpoint it right now, Ted, as to when it was. This is as good a 40 minutes of basketball as I've seen by Notre Dame's team this year. And this is not a bad LaSalle basketball no. team. And what's nice about Notre Dame, now here they played the last five minutes without Elmer Bennett. And they've kept it up. In Which fact, it stretched sure. the lead open yeah, without them. With Brooks Boyer in there. Exactly. Good point. And Overton at the line. We're going to see more of that the rest of the year. Digger said he's going to play Boyer and the Rosses and Cozen a little bit more. He's be yeah, Brooks has become an effective outside shooter and he's seen more time. And Overton makes them both and that'll be it. Doug Overton will leave with 20 points tonight as Notre Dame will win its ninth game of the year. A continuous commitment to improvement. One reason why the U.S. government awarded Cadillac the 1990 Malcolm Baldridge National Quality Award as demonstrated by the new 200 horsepower 4.9 liter V8 and electronically controlled transmission that not only generate more power but deliver the highest highway mileage of any V8 powered luxury car. Another reason why the only way to travel is Cadillac style. Strength Rolaids Antacid. Stronger because it has more calcium carbonate, more than any Tums tablet, and salt free. More calcium carbonate and salt free. This settles it once and for all. Set. It's not simply a game, it's an era of fitness, health, muscle development, body toning, beauty, and power. It's the era of Solifex. Become a part of it. Call anytime for a free brochure. Sunday afternoons, get footloose and fancy free with a major soccer league game of the week. Indoor action at its best every Sunday. Cleveland versus Tacoma in the MSL game of the week. Four Eastern on Sports Channel America, Sunday. It's been the best season ever for women's basketball at Notre Dame and the nationally ranked Lady Irish have a great matchup with Tennessee in Knoxville and you'll see it live Saturday on Sports Channel America. Here we have 2.28 remaining in the Notre Dame men are about ready to post their ninth win of the year. Notre Dame still, because of their preseason NIT, they're going to play 32 games. They still have 10 games remaining in this season, despite having lost 13 games already. 
tell you, this, this should give them a ton of confidence going, confidence going into the Syracuse game on Saturday. And Swede has it, 16 for Sweet. Most of the Notre Dame points, almost all of them have come from four men. Ellery, you saw, has a career-high 24. Bennett has 20. Tower and Sweet each have 16. That is Mike Stock in the game for LaSalle. And he won't want to remember that shot. And the crowd reacting as Diggers get empty his bench, including bringing on freshman Oliver Gibson, who is the crowd favorite, at least the student body favorite. Oliver Gibson, member of the Notre Dame football team, number 34. He's in with Posen, Joe Ross, and the walk-on, Matt Adamson, who gets a chance to play. There's Gibson, who's going to see some time in the defensive line for the Irish footballers in the fall. A minute 35 remaining. At the bottom of the screen, you could see Digger go to each one of the players that just came out of the game to congratulate them on a great performance. Well, it's got to make Digger and all the players oh, happy. Boy. We mentioned earlier, Notre Dame's had trouble closing games out. They've had a few games they could easily have won that get up that away from them. Tonight, they never let LaSalle threaten here in the second half. They were focused, I'll tell you that. They were focused from start to finish. Ray Schultz hits it. There's Adamson up for Notre Dame. The crowd wanting, it's always been a tradition here for the crowds to really root for the walk -ons. Adamson missing a three. And then South Bend's own Tony Varga was on the oh, I know it. early digger felt team. Still too. living in South Bend. Oh, my God. Oh. And Gibson has his basket wiped out. Uh, the game plan right now is that Adamson's going to shoot and Gibson's are going to shoot, and that's those are the ground rules with yeah. Digger, and that's why Tim Singleton brought the ball back out and started yeah. setting up the offense. Adamson has four points in his season, but Gibson hasn't scored yet. And uh, let's face it, these chances may not come to him the rest of the year for no. these guys. And there's a rebound for Gibson. In the final minute. Adamson had it slapped away, but he saved a nice little pass to Joe Ross. Oh, nice job there by Matt Adamson. And at 28 seconds, Joe Ross will go to the line. Here's Don Shelton fouls. And for Digger, career victory number 390 tonight as he creeps up on that very, very prestigious 400 win mark. He'd love to say he's going to get it this year, but he may have to wait until early next year to celebrate that one. And it is Syracuse coming here Saturday with a little revenge on their minds for Notre Dame's buzzer-beating win at Syracuse last year. And Gibson's going to be called for a foul. You know, one of the other things, Ted, that I wanted to mention earlier was that on New Year's Eve, that Overton had 45 points and Brooks had 46 points and they ushered out the two-player single-game scoring record and ushered in their own in that 133 to 118 win over Loyola Marymount and guess who had the old record? Two players, most points by two players uh -huh. in a game? Well, uh, I don't know who. Austin, Austin Carr and Collis Jones wow. in 1973. Austin Carr. <laughs> Collis Jones. Don Shelton is fouled at 12 seconds. So Oliver Gibson. He's taught in football, put your body on somebody. He's <laughs> definitely following yes, through with his instruction. You're right. For yes. Oliver Gibson, this is a contact sport. So remember. Get somebody in a right. different colored jersey, right? There's a little body contact right there. For Shelton at the line with 12 seconds remaining. Our next sports channel, Notre Dame Telecast, will be on the 18th of February. Back here at the Joyce Center when Creighton will be in to meet the Fighting Irish. Tony Baroni, and they've got the dynamic duo, Bob Harstad and Chad Gallagher. I do a lot of their games, and two great young men, and he's got another quality basketball team. They beat Notre Dame last year in Omaha. Holland goes in, and that will be the final points. And 
Notre Dame, a very impressive victory for the Irish tonight from start to finish, one of their best games of the year. Very happy, David Phelps. He's had too many unhappy handshakes this year. He'll well, savor this You one. bet. You bet. And the Irish tonight break LaSalle's a seven-game win streak. Just the fourth loss for the Explorers. Notre Dame, 84 to 68. Went to the fight capital of the world and asked the fans. This year, they'll take it, they'll enjoy it, they'll savor it. LaSalle's a pretty good ball club. Notre Dame paid them back for a win in Philadelphia last year with a good game tonight. And I'll tell you what, Jim, I just, what I'm going to remember about this game is LaSalle coming out in the first four minutes and firing away with no conscience at all from the three-point line. And if I'm on the other team, I say, hey, those guys must not think they can go inside against us. And it's not like Notre Dame has Matambo and Mourning inside. LaSalle fires away with no conscience, and to me, that set a bad tone for the game from the LaSalle side. Yeah, they're, they're not an inside team because uh, Milko is not an inside strong power player inside, nor is President, you know, Bradford President. So they're going to have to get it from, from outside, and as we said, you live by the sword and you die by the sword. It's as simple as that. It's no use trying to analyze it or yeah. become a Rhodes Scholar because it was that simple, plus Notre Dame played as good a 40-minute basketball game as we have done all year. Elmer Bennett didn't even play the final seven minutes, still had 20 points in a great game tonight, and of course Ellery had a career high 24. It was a one-point game at the half, even though Notre Dame dominated the first half, but the Irish stormed out and won the game early in the second. They did. Started the second half the exact same way. That was Jack Hurd right there with one of the few three-pointers that he got, but Notre Dame came out in the first half and was six for six, five of five in their first five shots in the second half, and boy, they took that one-point lead, and they caused Speedy to take that timeout within two or three minutes of the start of the second half. They really were patient. They got the touches that they needed. They got the reversals that they needed. They worked well against the man-to-man. -man. They worked well against the zone. There's the turnaround jumper that Keith has been so effective with. You know, he's turning into people, but he's got enough size that he can still get away with it. There's the steal now. There's the steal. This is the one that's Jack Hurd. Now it's going to come back. Now Singleton, sweet with the steal there. Singleton has it. Now Brooks Boyer is going to get it. This is the one where he knew the sweet was there, and he put it out in front. And that, my friends, is a circuit basket. And that's the kind of a night that it was for Notre Dame. And that's the play that ended the game. Ended any bet. hopes for exactly. LaSalle. When you get the scoring that Notre Dame got, 24 from Ellery, 20 from Bennett, and 16 from Tower and Sweet, you talk about turning it up a notch, which Digger has been saying since the Fonz went down. That's exactly what he's talking about in terms of turning it up a notch and getting the balanced scoring. Right, and that's 76 of the 84 Notre Dame points coming from those four uh, key people. Interesting because Digger brought Damon Sweet off the bench tonight, and Sweet was still able yeah. to get 16 points, a lot of key points down the stretch. Sure, that started with the Dayton game when he did not start in the Dayton game, and boy, ever since then, Kevin Ellery's been starting, and what a job he has done as a starter as opposed to coming off the bench. Uh, Overton and Woods with, with 20 each, and Jack Hurd had 11, so that's 51 of their points, but the three-point shooting was what really did LaSalle in in the, final, in the final analysis. And let's face it, LaSalle did not play a very good 40 minutes of basketball, right. and I'm sure if we talk to Speedy right now, yeah. he would be the first, ones to say, first one to say, I'm very disappointed in the way my team played basketball. I think at both ends, not only offensively, but defensively. And look at the shooting. You see the final numbers. Notre Dame just sizzling tonight at 65%. And uh, 32 three-point field goal attempts for LaSalle tonight. That's a building record, a Joyce <laughs> Center record. Austin Carr didn't have a chance. So it's not fair. Austin Carr would have broken that record had he had a chance. 32 attempted shots. Well, LaSalle goes back into the Metro Athletic Conference, and Notre Dame meets, LaSalle, or meets Syracuse.